our climate is changing. We read about it every day and see and feel it in the changing weather. And we already know what that means for us here in South Africa. And it's easy to feel depressed or say we're powerless to do anything as individuals because it's the big corporates and fossil fuel companies that are doing the real damage. And yes, that's true, partly. But let's think about it for a minute. Who are the corporates and manufacturers selling to? Who buys their products? We do. I'm going to look at just two relatively small but hugely important ways of helping to reverse or at least slow down climate change. We've got enough doom, gloom and negativity in our world, so let's move forward with some positive thoughts and actions. I'm going to start with plastics, but I'm not going to spend time talking about how much we use, how much we dispose of, how badly we dispose of it and how our oceans are full of it and so on and so on because I suspect you're already familiar with the story. Instead, I want to offer a simple equation. If we reduce our plastic consumption, the manufacturers would also produce less. It makes simple business sense. But how do we do that? First things first, we must wean ourselves off single-use plastics. 90% of the plastic items in our daily lives are used once and then chucked. Grocery bags, plastic wraps, disposable cutlery, straws, coffee cup lids and fast food containers. We've got to replace all that stuff with reusable versions. Don't buy bottled water. Always have your own mug ready for when you want to buy coffee at Starbucks or wherever. Don't use plastic bags. Take your own. And that means the small fabric ones for your fruit and vegetables too. Cook more at home. Stop going to fast food outlets. And here's a really important thing. Boycott those tiny microbeads and microplastics that have such a massive detrimental impact. Microbeads are used in personal hygiene products, sunscreen, cosmetics and some household detergents. Often all they bring is visual appeal, but they take a huge toll on the environment. Microplastics are tiny plastic particles that come from both commercial product development and the breakdown of larger plastics like our fleeces that we wear garden furniture, the list is endless. But the important thing to know is that when microbeads and microplastics are washed down the drain from our showers and washing machines, they pollute bodies of water and harm local wildlife. For example, ingested microplastics can block the gastrointestinal tract of small birds and fish so that they literally starve to death. But they also enter our own systems with a scary list of consequences. I'm sure some of you listening will be thinking, well, that's all very well, but how am I going to find these microbeads and microplastics? Inform yourself is the easy answer. Find out from Google. Look at the label before you buy. Or alternatively, there are apps that you can download on your phone to help you. Beat the microbead app is one. And here's another to help you on your plastic reduction journey the My Little Plastic Footprint app that gives you all the bad news on the plastic in your daily life, but also alternatives that you can use instead. Okay, so let's park the plastics for the moment and move on to power. What kind of power? Well, fossil fuel power. And the first thing we think of is the fuel in our cars. And the solution is easy, drive less, share cars, or how about getting into the habit of having at least one car free day a week? But even more importantly, let's look at the fossil fuels that provide our electricity. And here in South Africa, we're talking coal. It's interesting, but in South Africa, one of the most frequent responses I get when talking about coal and climate change is that China or India are much worse, and so they should be sorting out their mess first. But in fact, the Global Carbon Atlas estimates that in 2019, South Africa's per person emissions were 8.2 tonnes of CO2, while China's were 7.1, and India's 1.9. Sometimes the truth is uncomfortable. But there is another way of looking at it. We consumers have power. I want you to hang on to that word, power. We can force change, and here's how. 
More and more people in South Africa are adopting solar power, and it's hardly surprising. Increased electricity costs, load shedding, and oh yes, some of us even think about its benefit for the environment. But here's something I don't understand. On the left is the village where my daughter lives in the UK. It's not a particularly affluent area and the UK isn't famous for its sunshine. And then on the right we have Parkview in Johannesburg, where it's sunny 72.6% of daylight hours and its occupants are generally affluent. But can you spot the difference between the two photos? No? Well, where are the solar panels in Parkview? I think the key is in changing our priorities. We have to make choices. And this is where we have to talk more seriously first to our own consciences and then to people we know. Consumer power is real if we want it to be. Now there is another element, a thread, a commonality in everything I've been talking about that you might or might not have spotted. Hydrocarbons, the single item present as a major component in plastic and fossil fuels. Hydrocarbons occur naturally in petroleum, natural gas and coal. Combustion of hydrocarbons is the main source of the world's energy and a primary cause of global warming. Most plastic in use today also comes from the hydrocarbons in crude oil, natural gas and coal. In fact, 10 to 13 percent of the CO2 emissions are due to the production and burning of plastics, which is more than the airline, vehicle and shipping transports put together. But not many plastic producers want to talk about that. And now for something even more terrifying. Companies producing plastic have expansion plans. And why do you think that is? It's because consumers and governments are demanding greener electric cars. Though here in South Africa, that would ultimately mean coal power cars until someone pushes ESCOM into a seismic change. But anyway, it still means sales in petrol are going down worldwide which means the petroleum companies feel threatened and want to expand their market into other areas, which means more plastic. Fossil fuel companies have invested more than $180 billion into building plastic production facilities over the last seven years. And that money will fund the building of more plastic production facilities in the next decade. And here is a contemporary example of what I'm talking about. ExxonMobil has just launched one of the largest chemical recycling plants in North America and announced that by the end of 2026, the oil giant hopes to have enough chemical recycling capacity to process roughly 450,000 metric tons of plastic each year. It sounds good, but that's just a drop in the bucket compared with how much plastic it creates. In 2021, ExxonMobil churned out 6 million tons of new single-use plastic. But to recycle a kilogram of high density polyethylene plastic requires nearly seven times the amount of energy needed to make a kilogram of virgin plastic. Typically, that energy comes from burning fossil fuels, which creates air pollution and planet heating carbon emissions. Greenwashing on a vast and shocking scale. But are we going to sit back and let that happen? We've already seen what can happen if we refuse to buy petrol cars. Now imagine what would happen to the phone companies if we refused to buy their phones unless they were fully recyclable and ethically produced. Imagine what would happen to our stores if we refused to buy their goods wrapped in plastic. Imagine what would happen if we took the plastic back to them and said, here, you deal with this. What would happen? They would have to change. They would have to take responsibility, but then so would we, because people like us are fortunate enough to be able to make those decisions and use our power as consumers. Of course, not everyone can, but because we can, it's up to us to change our behavior and measure the environmental impact of everything we do and everything we buy. Because as I've shown you, the people who should, won't. And now a very precise call to action. See what you think of this and what you as an individual or as a club member could do to change it. With a population of about 5 million people, Joburg generates about 1.4 million tons of domestic waste a year. And Unchem CBD is only one of the results of this. 
Another problem currently facing Joburg is that its residents produce so much solid waste that it is fast running out of landfill space. Unfortunately for, for one of the, the municipalities of Gauteng and specifically Johannesburg, they are literally running out of airspace. So on, on that basis, the city of Johannesburg has been warned about, I reckon, eight years ago to say that, that people, you are running out of space to dispose of your waste. Now, the same study that was done for the city of Johannesburg showed to them that they have to immediately divert 40% of their waste stream away from landfills and then they can extend the three and a half years to something like five and a half to six years and even longer. Now, where do they extend that to? Why do we need to take a resource like garden greens, a resource like building rubble into a landfill that cannot really pollute, but rather take them to a facility where the, the garden greens can be processed into compost, the building rubble can be reprocessed or repurposed, and then taking the commodities out because then you're only sitting with, with about, I would say, 25% of the waste that need to be disposed of. So therefore, you prolong the, the life of that landfill. But of course, this isn't just happening in Johannesburg. A major source of methane is from the decay of organic waste in solid waste landfills. But why is that such an issue? Well, due to its structure, methane traps more heat in the atmosphere per molecule than carbon dioxide, which makes it 80 times more harmful. Super emitter landfills account for 43% of the methane in our atmosphere. Can you see a theme here? Shouldn't we be ensuring that the plastic we can't avoid using is efficiently recycled? Shouldn't we be demanding that green waste does not go into landfill? Couldn't we enable our recyclers to help prevent this happening by funding or at the very least supporting the establishment of green composting sites, which would be an income source, instead of yet another nail in our planet's coffin? Do you remember the old Grimm's fairy tale about the brave little tailor who killed seven flies with one blow and managed to convince giants and kings that he was a force to be reckoned with? Well, that's what we have to do now. We have to be like that tailor, choose our swarm and swat it dead. Because if we don't, our children and grandchildren and all the other living things we share the earth with won't have an environment to fight for anymore.